I've been using the Surface Go for about three months now. Uh, I initially got a Surface Go, the business model, which actually comes with Windows 10 Pro. And then a little after that, the Surface Go LTE came out. So a device with mobile data inbuilt. So I got one of those to replace the Surface Go. So I've been using it to travel around. I, I do training work. So I've been in Canberra, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane across the last couple of months. And I've been spending a lot of time on planes and trains and public transport. And I absolutely love the Surface Go for working in those places. It's a 10 inch device, so it's a really nice small form factor. I love the keyboard, the ability to take notes with the pen. Um, it's so mobile and lightweight that I just take this thing everywhere with me. So it's been a really, really great device. The kinds of things that I'm doing with the Surface Go as I work, I've been taking a lot of notes, of course. I've been running presentations and training from the device. I've also been doing a lot of email, task lists, to-do lists, uh, social media, things like that while I'm on the go. So I'll show you some of those things that I'm doing with the Surface Go and I'll talk about some of the issues that I've been having with it as well. So to get started, one of the first things that I love about the Surface Go is the face recognition, the Windows Hello camera that's built into the device. If I click on the power button there, you'll see that it's already recognized me and logged in. So when I'm doing email on the Surface Go, I actually don't use Outlook because Outlook is a great email system that's really designed for big screens. And with this small screen here, I find that I'm much better off using the Mail app. Now the Mail app could be considered to be the mobile version of Outlook. It's very similar to the version of Outlook that you might have on your iPhone or Android phone. Um, and what I find is it's just a lot more touch friendly and it's quicker, it's lighter, it's easier to use. So I tend to be using that app for my email. The other thing I really like about the mail app on Windows 10 is the calendar aspect of it. Um, I'll open up the calendar app and you can see that it's just a really nice, simple, touch-friendly calendar interface and I can swipe along and have a look at my calendar and what's going on, what's coming up, all that sort of stuff very quickly and easily and it's all very touch-friendly. So rather than using Outlook, I would definitely recommend for using Surface Go, use the inbuilt Windows 10 Mail app and calendar. Alongside of that, I'm also doing my task list, my daily lists in Microsoft To Do. And uh, that's all interlinked with that uh, mail and calendar app as well. Um, this is, of course is all accessing the data, the email data that's sitting in my Office 365 email box. So when I'm on the Surface Studio, for example, I will be looking at the same data through Outlook. But here, when I'm mobile, I'm gonna be using these cool apps. With the To Do app, um, it's a really nice, simple interface, helps me to manage my daily tasks and, and you know, rolling tasks, flagged emails, things like that all come in here automatically. And when I'm mobile with this, it's just a really nice interface. So if I wanted to type a task here, the keyboard on this device is one of the, the high points. It's a really nice keyboard, very similar feel to the Surface Pro keyboard, but just in a nice smaller form factor. So I would even go as far as to say this is a little bit cute, this keyboard. I reckon it's, uh, it's kind of small and um, I really like it. The trackpad on this is awesome as well. It's actually a bigger trackpad than the Surface Pro. So it's pretty easy to get around different apps, multi-touch gestures, all of those sorts of things with the keyboard and trackpad on the Surface Go. Of course, there's lots of times, for example, when I'm doing my to-do lists, that I actually wanna use touch and pen instead of the keyboard. So for me, being on a plane, there's not really a lot of room uh, when you're working in economy, especially on a plane with the seat in front of you, uh, tray table, all that sort of thing. So instead of using the keyboard, I often fold the keyboard underneath the device. The keys all turn off when I do that, so I don't need to worry about anything there. I sit that on my lap or on the tray table, and I actually take the pen and I write my to-dos on the screen. Normally I'd lay that a bit flatter to do that. And then I just add it to my day and cross off the task when I'm done as well. So that's a really awesome thing about working with the Surface Go and the pen. Um, 
In addition to that, of course, I'm often taking notes in OneNote. So I might, uh, again, be on the plane and think of something that I need to, some thoughts that I need to write down. And I've got a way to pull up OneNote, put some lines on the page. I normally turn the device around into the portrait mode, get rid of all my menus and take notes on the screen. I'm using the OneNote app, not the desktop version, not OneNote 2016. Again, on this device, it's just a lot more lightweight. It's quicker and easier to use, more touch friendly, more pen friendly. So that's a better choice on a device like the Surface Go, I think. Another task that I'm constantly doing with the Surface Go is projecting. Uh, I'll be teaching people how to use this sort of stuff that we're doing here using OneNote and using the Surface Pro. So I will actually use one of these. It's a, a USB-C to HDMI converter. And I'll be plugging that into the side of the device here. So there's a USB-C port to plug into a projector. So I might have a PowerPoint presentation on the screen. I might have one node up or something like that. And being able to project that via that USB-C converter is really easy and it works quite well. Um, the USB-C converter that I'm using here is a HP one. It's a good quality one. I've seen some poorer quality USB-C um, adapters and I kind of steer clear of those. I'd probably be a bit careful about buying from eBay, although I love to buy stuff on eBay. That's probably one of the things I wouldn't buy uh, cheap brands on. And the last couple of things that I'm doing on the Surface Go when I'm traveling and moving around, social media, first of all, I do, I'm fairly active on Twitter. Uh, so I might have the Twitter app open here on the Surface Go. Uh, it's a really nice, uh, simple uh, PWA app uh, that I find works really well, um, especially with having the LTE mobile data built into the device. I'm always connected and I can check and have a look what's going on and reply to threads on Twitter and LinkedIn as well. Um, but also for me, internally we use Microsoft Teams a fair bit to stay in touch with each other for video conferencing and chats, but also threaded conversations. So I'll often have Microsoft Teams up here and I'll be looking through my feed on Teams and responding to different things that are going on within uh, my team. To do that, I might use the on-screen keyboard or the handwriting recognition capability that's built into Windows. I find that handwriting recognition works pretty well on this device. Well, what, was, what even was that word that I just wrote then? Uh, I'm not really writing in a normal uh, way because I, I don't have the screen flat. So normally if I was writing, I'd always flatten the screen down. So maybe I'll just do that just to demonstrate that a bit more. So hopefully that gives you some ideas about how I'm using the Surface Go to stay connected and be much more mobile. Again, I really love that small 10 inch form factor. I love the weight of the device. It's really lightweight and easy to carry around and yet it has some amazing capabilities in it. Um, and I love the face recognition and things like that that make it so much easier to use, not to mention, of course, the pen. So, of course, there are some issues that I found in using the Surface Go. So I just want to cover off a few things. The first one is that with the Surface Go, we have an Intel Pentium processor. So that's a fairly low spec processor if you compare it to something like the Surface Pro, um, which has an i5 or maybe an i7 processor inbuilt. Um, I do find at times, for example, if Windows updates are running in the background that the device can become a little unresponsive and slow. And that uh, everybody finds that annoying and I do too. Um, so sometimes I just be a bit careful about when I choose to run Windows updates and maybe checking those a little bit more regularly to try and mitigate that. And I'm not going to run a lot of resource intensive tasks on this sort of device. I wouldn't be doing video editing on here. I'm even not really trying out photo editing on this device because I don't think it has the processor to support that. The other thing that I've found to be a little bit of an issue with the Surface Go is the pen. So the brand new Surface Pen, uh, that was the one that came out with the 2017 Surface Pro, so this one here. Um, when I use this in OneNote or to, to take notes in any application, I do find at times, and it's doing it right now, 
that it can be a little funny in the way it responds to the pen. So I'm going to zoom in here and show you that the way I wrote the letter I there, um, it's kind of come out a little bit shaky and you can see that across the different words that I'm writing here. Um, this is an issue that I only have with the current generation, the new generation pen that supports tilt sensitivity. So instead of using that brand new pen, which I really should be able to use on the Surface Go, I'm actually using an older generation uh, Surface Pro 4 pen. And I find that that doesn't have this pen jitter issue that I'm seeing with the new Surface Pen. So that is no doubt something that Microsoft can fix. It is a bug. Um, I've seen a lot of posts on forums and I've certainly posted myself on forums about that one. Um, so hopefully they will fix that with a firmware update fairly soon and then I can go back to using the new Surface Pen which has uh, got quite a nice feel to it. Another issue that I have sometimes with this Surface Go is that the small form factor can make it a little bit limited for note taking. So if I'm going to a meeting or a conference or something like that where I want to be able to reference a document or some information alongside of my note taking, I just really find that I'm running out of space on the Surface Go because the screen is so small. On the other hand, the Surface Pro with that 12 inch screen just gives me a little bit more room to move when I'm taking notes. The trade-off is of course weight and size. I mean, the mobility of this device is unmatched when you consider the Surface Pro, uh, but there are times when I'll choose to take the Surface Pro instead of the Surface Go for that reason. So that's my experience with the Surface Go. Tell us yours in the comments below. Remember to give us the thumbs up if you like this content and subscribe to our channel to learn more about how to use your Surface Go or Surface devices.